in an effort to not be redundant. I put out a review for Borderlands a day or so back, didn't like the film, and now I'm going to do a spoiler review on it. So if you want to stick around for that, please join me. Otherwise, you can check out my other review where I don't ruin any of the stupid crap that takes place in the film, and then you can come back and watch this after you see the movie for yourself. Or better yet, do yourself the favor and just skip it all together and hear what I have to say. Let's begin. Borderlands is a sci-fi PG-13 movie starring Kate Blanchett, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, and some other people. They're all miscast. They're all incredibly miscast. It's almost amazing how far from the characters from the video game these guys are. And yes, Borderlands is based on a video game. Gearbox developed, they also helped produce this movie. But I have a hard time believing they really even looked at the film before it hit theaters, because what in the hell were they thinking? It's also even more head-scratching that Eli Roth is the director. Not to say he couldn't make a good version of this film, there probably was one, or at least something closer to decent on the cutting room floor. And I have to imagine it was a bit harder on the rating, probably an R-rated film with blood, gore, violence, excessive language, etc. Maybe not, this is all speculation. But based on Eli Roth's filmography, it seems likely that there was an edgier version of this movie. Instead of what is essentially the Paw Patrol of Guardians of the Galaxy. Before I jump into the spoilers, if you wouldn't mind jumping into the subscribe button, that was a weird way of asking that, uh, ju just hit subscribe and then you will see more videos by me if you want to. Otherwise, do it anyways, just, just to see what happens. And you can even like the video and comment, that helps the algorithm or something, who knows, who knows anymore. This film is going to take place primarily on the looter shooter planet of Pandora. This place is filled with the most disgusting, depraved, garbage individuals around, or as Kate Blanchett's character would say, it's a dumpster fire. Remember when people said that? I guess I still say it, but I'm, I'm old and out of touch. Again, subscribe. Her character Lilith is a bounty hunter. Keep in mind, Lilith is like 23 in the video games, so 55-year-old Kate Blanchett, not quite pulling it off. Granted, they did say she's been doing this for a long time, so they have aged her character up. Which makes sense when you're the first film in what would hopefully be a franchise, but absolutely won't because this movie is tanking at the box office. And again, this is going to be across the board. All these characters have been aged up by like 20, 30, or even 40 years from the video game. Why? I, I don't know. Lilith is minding her own business at the bar. She has collected a bounty. She's just having a nice drink. When Atlas's goons show up and have a proposition marked fuck you for her. They want her to go rescue Atlas's daughter, Tiny Tina, played by Ariana Greenblatt. She has been whisked away to the planet Pandora by Roland, played by Kevin Hart. We actually see this riveting prison breakout when Roland shows up, Tiny Tina's in a cell, he shoots a bunch of people in a hallway. He conveniently runs into Krieg, who breaks out of one of the other prison cells while this whole thing's going on. They become friends in like four seconds. Roland's like, hey, uh, you wanna you wanna like team up and bro out? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we me do that. And that that's their character development. So Lilith, after killing three or four goons for really no reason at all, just to show how edgy and cool she is, I suppose, accepts Atlas's offer because he pays her a whole bunch of credits on her little digital intercom thingy-mabobber. And she is also sent to Pandora. What's fun about Pandora is they mention like 50 times in the course of two minutes that there's a massive vault, a secret vault on this planet that everyone's been trying to get their hands on. That's fun because it reminds me of another video game TV series that just came out on Amazon Prime called Fallout. And that was so much better than this. And it was rated R and everything tonally matched up with the game, with the vibe it was going for, the locations, the characters, the clothing, the dialogue. It all worked really well in Fallout. Watch Fallout and not this. Lilith boards a bus where we get this whole vault spiel, it's, it's kind of pointless, and then she gets dropped off, and conveniently, Claptrap finds her, says he's been lying dormant for like 30 years waiting for her to return home. Because it turns out Lilith was born on Pandora, but left at a young age. You know what, I can't wait to see where this mystery goes. I'm sure it's going to unfold in a very logical, sensible way, and not be completely out of fucking left field. It's going to be completely out of left field. 
Claptrap informs her that he's impervious to damage, which is true, and he's also annoying beyond all belief. Jack Black is voicing the character. I freaking love Jack Black. I've liked pretty much everything he's ever done sans this movie and this character. His voice is annoying. He's got a voice modulator, which is enhancing everything and just giving it an obnoxious sound. And I get that that's the character. It's supposed to be like that, but there's a way to do it and make it funny. Just ask Steve Urkel. Lilith shows Claptrack a photo of Tiny Tina and demands he track her down. He does this in like two seconds. He's, he's like scanning, beep, boop, beep, beep, beep. Got her location. They head over to Tiny Tina's place. She's hiding, she pops out. She tries to kill Lilith almost instantly. And eventually Krieg and Roland show up and we have a fight. It's all very mediocre at best. It looks like shit though. The CG, the background, everything looks really fake. It screams reshoots which I've heard that it's had a lot of reshoots and that doesn't surprise me. This movie reeks of Suicide Squad. Not The Suicide Squad by James Gunn. I really like that one. This one feels like Suicide Squad. Just a complete mess. The characters don't gel at all. The dialogue is stiff. It doesn't work. The only thing missing really that separates them is it doesn't have 18 pop songs jammed in every five seconds in this one. There are a couple, and they do feel out of place, but not enough to say, yeah, these are one-to-one -one films. I think I would rather watch Borderlands over that pile of shit, even though that gave me Harley Quinn, which I will forever be grateful for. It gave me Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. It also gave me Jared Leto's Joker. So they cancel each other out. Lilith soon finds out that Atlas was just using her to track down the girl. Instantly, a whole fleet of Atlas bad guys show up in vehicles on the ground and in the air. They, they were just around the corner, apparently. And also, what? God, it was convenient that Lilith had a robot on Pandora that activated as soon as she landed and could show her exactly where this girl's at. This leads to a terrible chase scene where Roland drives them through this piss valley and through the mouth of a giant creature. We're also introduced to a character that works for Atlas named, I, I don't know, I think it's Nox. But I, that could be completely wrong. That could be a different character altogether. I think it's Nox. She has a terrible haircut. I, I just remember that much. And she apparently has a history with Roland. I've only played a couple of the Borderlands games and they were not for the plot. So I don't know if this is a carryover from the storyline from the video game, but I'm almost positive they never explain what the hell's going on between her and Roland. Because they clearly have a relationship, Claptrap obnoxiously points it out several times, but I don't think they ever actually explain what the hell was going on between these two. Maybe they do. Maybe I blacked out or got up, went to the bathroom, looked in the mirror for five minutes, questioning my existence altogether before deciding, yeah, I'll come back to the movie only to find fucking Lilith turning into the dark Phoenix, but we'll get there. After they go through Piss Valley and Tiny Tina throws a fit because she got pissed in her mouth. By the way, Tiny Tina, she's actually good in this movie. I found her to be lovely. She was funny. She was putting it all out there while everyone else looks like they are sleepwalking through their roles, especially Kevin Hart as Roland. Actually, even Kate Blanchett as Lilith. Kate Blanchett's a phenomenal actress. I think she was up for an Academy Award for her performance in Tar. I don't remember if she won or not, but she was freaking awesome in that movie. Good movie, by the way, as well. So watch Fallout and Tar instead of this. I don't know if my mic is picking this up, but there's a guy just going to town with his weed whacker outside. That's not a euphemism. It's coming in loud and hot. Maybe it's not going to pick up. We're going to move past it. We're going to hope not. Oh my God, what happens next? What happens next? I don't remember. They go... Oh yeah, they go to this crappy city. They put on masks, but uh, Roland's instantly recognized by some loser friend he worked with. Well friend. He tries to turn Roland in, but fan favorite character from the video game Moxie shows up. I, I don't remember if she was a fan favorite, but I think she was part of an expansion pack or something. I'm only slightly familiar with the games. 1000 apologies. She's played by Gina Gershon. Because every character in this film is played by at least a 50 year old. <laughs> what is happening? These should be the ages of the characters after they've milked this franchise for like eight movies. Not the first. What in the fuck is this guy doing? He sounds like he's right outside my window. I guess Casper the Friendly Ghost is outside because I don't see anyone, but I hear it very loudly. We're gonna push past it. 
The room's already echoey enough. I, I'm not happy with this setup, but this is what I have to work with. Where was Moxie saves the day. We go up a secret elevator shaft and we meet Jamie Lee Curtis's character. Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, spry, youthful, energetic Jamie Lee Curtis. They know their audience for this film for sure. She plays Tannis, a scientist of sorts. She has a history with Lilith. She gave her up to a band of thugs. That will be a reveal later in the film. I'm not gonna waste my time getting to it later. We're going to talk about it now. She was handed off Lilith from the mom before the mom died. And then she kicked that kid out the door as fast as she possibly could to carry on her mother's work in secret. And that work is to find the three keys that open the magical vault. And so that's going to be the focus of the rest of the film going after the vault keys. One of which is underground surrounded by a bunch of psychos. Psychos are the dudes that wear the cool masks and no shirts and set each other on fire and just are all around trash bag people. This is going to lead to an incredibly riveting scene, sarcasm, where the characters have to sidestep over some scaffolding so they don't fall into some mutagen pond below. How long does a person need to weed whip for? Are you mowing the lawn with your weed whipper, sir? Is he mowing his lawn with it? This is gonna have to go on the rant channel. Hey, if you don't know, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I bitch up a storm about the dumbest first world problems imaginable. This might be on the docket. I can't even concentrate. I can't even concentrate. I don't wanna do this again later. Okay, uh, Claptrap gets shot up a bunch by these psychopaths while the others get through unscathed. And they make their way into a room full of crates, stacked from bottom to ceiling, full of paraphernalia, whatever, I don't know. And Lilith finds it immediately. It's bizarre how fast she finds it, but we don't have time to question anything in this. We'll save that reveal for the final act, and it is a doozy. This leads to the one and only cool action sequence in the whole flick, where our whole team works together to dispatch a bunch of psychos as they enter the room. Lilith has these cool double guns. They make their way to an elevator. They get in, but it's not working. They don't have power. They have to make the cables hook together. So naturally, they will have the robot that can't die grab the cables and hold them together. No. Roland decides to do it because no reason at all. What? Why would he do this? It makes no sense. But yeah, he throws some electrical tape around it and he holds it together so that they can blow through the top and they're fine. Everybody's fine, of course. He goes down in a blaze of glory. I sure hope he's okay. The movie doesn't dwell on it. We know he's okay. Lilith even says, don't worry about it. He's fine. He'll show up in like the third act. With two of the three stones intact, I don't remember how they got the first stone, but they got they got the second one out of the crate and barrel. Where the fuck did they get the first one? They, they say it. I think they just, someone just had it, okay? Who cares? They have two of the three. Well, Tiny Tina drops an atomic bomb's worth of knowledge, stating that she is in fact the third stone. She's the third key. She's special. She constantly mentions how special she is because she wasn't born the good old fashioned way, the old <laughs> sticking your finger inside of your hand and pulling it out method. No, she was created in a lab by her dad using the pure blood, the DNA from the original creators of the vault and all the tech and majesty that takes place throughout the galaxy. Alas, they insert the two keys and she steps in the spot for the third and nothing happens. It doesn't work. Turns out the only trophy she's worth is a participation award. So she gets off the stone and that's when Lilith pops into action. She steps on it and the transformer blocks come into place and a purple portal opens up. I forgot, uh, <laughs> I forgot that, <laughs> I forgot to mention. A few minutes back when that elevator scene happened and they blow out the fucking floor and everybody's fine. The reason they're fine is because they teleported like Nightcrawler out of there and onto land. How? Tiny Tina assumes she somehow did it, but it was actually Lilith all along. Lilith is the special one. She's the key to everything. Okay. They go into a backstory which I couldn't really make sense of and then she steps on the platform 
and becomes the phoenix. She gets fire wings and she can fly and she can throw fire shields around everybody else. This is something that happens in the movie. She's now truly a superhero. She's a guardian of the galaxy. She's an Avenger. She takes to the sky and not a minute too soon because Atlas and his crew have been in pursuit the whole time. Keep in mind, I have skipped over several key moments in this movie that are equally as stupid as this, but I'm trying to keep my head clear and not take that weed whipper and put it to the guy's face outside, okay? He's just manicuring his lawn. I can't really be mad at him. It's not my fault that these houses are built out of paper and I can hear everything from across the street. Lilith, now in Alita Battle Angel form, is flying around, taking guys out. Atlas is controlling via Nintendo Power Glove a battleship up top, and he's shooting lasers down at her, and it doesn't seem to have much effect. This whole section is just absolutely atrocious. It's just, it's just peak, just perfection. Chef's kiss, really. Hands off to you, Eli Roth. What a nightmare. He somehow manages to grab Tiny Tina and he demands to go into the portals. Lilith follows him in, kicks his ass, and throws him to a monster that will be tentacly raping him for the rest of his life. That's what's implied, at least. It ends the same way Guardians of the Galaxy 2 ended, without the heart, without the emotion, without anything, actually, of substance. With our team looking out at the fireworks in the city basking in the fact that they got paid a bunch of money to be in a shit film and they can move on and just do something else while we suffer through it. Paying our hard-earned cash to waste two more precious hours of our life on planet watching this drek. Tiny Tina looks up at uh, Lilith and says, Could you do the thing? Could you do the thing one more time? Kate Blanchett tips the orange fake hair, pops out the wings and flies off into the night sky, bursting into a fiery light of energy, making a dumb symbol and ruining my afternoon at the theater. Holy Christ, I think I got pretty much everything out that I needed to. That's Borderlands, borderline atrocious. Watchable hot trash. For the first two acts, you can put it on and just kind of like mindlessly watch and go, <laughs> wow, this is pretty bad. Kind of like Suicide Squad. But that third act, oh my, God. much like Suicide Squad, the third act is completely off the rails dumb. They really are kind of a perfect pairing. Something you could put on back to back and just laugh at how ridiculous and terrible these movies are. And so there you have it. My thoughts on Borderland, a complete miss. What a waste of talent, time, and energy. Really just all around missing the mark on what this film could have been. Let me know your thoughts. Did you waste your time going out and watching it? My guess is no, because it's tanking at the box office. Please again, think of liking the video, subscribing, and checking out that second channel. And maybe if you really want to help me out, become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I do tons of movie reviews every single week. It takes a lot of time and energy, and it's not even my real job, believe it or not. This is a second job. Plus I have a family. So there's a lot, a lot on my plate. I would appreciate the support. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.